Welcome to Mark D Maker. Today we'll be making Halloween yard art. This one's about 10 years old, so we're going to redo it. The first step is to get the image onto the plywood. Since I already had the image, I used tracing paper. This projector runs about $200, but is very useful in transferring images. What I would usually do is simply use the projector to project the image and draw it directly on the wood. Since I already had the wood figures, I trace them instead. I used Super 77 spray adhesive on the back of the tracing paper to stick it to the plywood. Let the spray set up slightly until it's tacky, and then apply it directly to the plywood. Something to remember when you're gluing the paper onto the board is there is a right element and a left element. So one of the ghosts is pulling to the right, one of them is pulling to the left. I made two right. I'll have to go back and correct this later. This is a Bosch jigsaw. This is a high quality tool that'll last a lifetime well worth the hundred and twenty dollars. This piece has negative spaces that need to be cut out so I drilled some holes and I'm marking in those narrow areas to make sure I don't make a mistake when I cut it out. Look out! Oh, it's just Bruno, my daughter's cat. Here I'm starting to cut out the shapes in the plywood. If you look carefully, you can see the palette where the plywood is resting. It is purposely missing boards in the center so the jigsaw blade can go down in there and cut and still have support on the sides. It makes a great work table. Here I'm starting to cut the negative spaces within the piece. The holes that I drilled earlier come in very handy. It makes this process so much easier. To the side of me, you'll see a pallet. That's for a future project. I'll be showing how to take them apart and how to make shelves and other things out of them.
I found when going around curves, if you slow down the speed of the saw when going around the curves, it makes it a lot easier. This is a variable speed saw. So when you pull the trigger, it, it goes faster. When you let off, it slows down. That's important. It gives you a lot of control. So here I'm sanding. This is another tool where you don't want to cut corners. Get the best tool you can afford. This really puts the, like the finishing touches on a piece. Really smooths out all the rough edges, round over the corners. Makes it look and feel like a finished piece. This is a wood burning tool. This is how I'm going to transfer the image, the inside lines of the image, onto the plywood. I would normally project the image and draw in the lines, but since I didn't do that this time, I'm burning through the tracing paper into the wood. And then I'm gonna do some very light carving, sand and paint. Notice how I'm bracing my hand against the wood as I'm doing this detail work. Bracing your hand or your finger against the work is so important when doing any kind of work, whether it's carving, wood burning, painting, or dental work. You brace your hand against the surface that you're working on for stability. All right, since we're done burning the image in, we can go ahead and take the paper off. The paper should just peel right off as long as you just spray one side and let it tack up before you put the paper down. All right, here I'm doing just some really light relief carving. I'm coming in right up to the burn line and using the burn line kind of like a stop cut. It'll just help the image a little better, especially uh, during daylight hours where it's more visible. It's going to give it a, a little bit more uh, definition. Here I'm doing a little bit of hand sanding just to smooth out where I did the carving. The first thing I did when carving was use the V-tool to go along the burn lines and then carve out with a gouge a little bit of the background just right by whatever's in the foreground. Now I'm sanding it smooth. There goes Bruno. What I'm doing here is using a Sharpie and following the lines I made with the V gouge. And this will just make it easier once it's painted, once I paint it white, to come back with the Sharpie and hit these lines again. It'll just make it very obvious where these lines go.
I used a wood sealer on this before I painted because this particular plywood is not rated for outdoors. I could have skipped that process if it was rated for outdoors. For instance, CDX plywood, the X stands for exterior glue that is used to hold it together. And that exterior glue means it's not gonna fall apart when it gets wet. I am using exterior paint. It'll just last longer, look better longer. It's a wise choice. This is about when I started to notice that both of these ghost elements were facing the same way. I'll simply take the smaller one, flip it over, do the image on the back of it, so it'll look better. Don't get frustrated if you make a mistake. That's just part of learning. Painting the edges is the most important part. I'm painting with this exterior paint on the edges, the top edges where the rain would hit or the bottom edges where moisture might seep in. That is the most important part of the paint's job. This is the old ones. I put a fresh coat of paint on it and you can see the Sharpie lines right through it. This is how you would touch up your new ones. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Happy Halloween.